This morning, I've talked about how important it is to understand as we approach the Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, as we get closer to that Sunday, there are things that we need to understand why it is so important. Not because it's Easter and the Easter eggs and the bunnies and all that. That's not what's important. What's important is to know why he died and why he went to the cross. I do understand that there are things in our lives that we do not take cautious of and we need to make them the first thing as a priority in our life, but we ignore them because we do not care how important it is to be obedient to the word of God. I want to talk about forgiveness this morning. You know why I want to talk about forgiveness? Because forgiveness is the first word that was spoken on the cross when Jesus pronounced the seven last sayings of Jesus Christ. It was the first word, not the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh. It was the first word. And you know, being number one means you have to be the best. If you're in a race and you end up at the end of the finish line as number one, that means you're the best. If you're number one at the head of your class, you're the best. So being number one means something. And here, this word forgiveness is the first word of the seven last words of Jesus Christ. And the first word is, Father, forgive them. Second word, you will be with me in paradise. Third word, woman, this is your son. This is your mother. Fourth word, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Fifth word, I thirst. Sixth word, it's finished. Seventh word, into your hands I commend your spirit. And here the first word is, Father, forgive them. Out of all of the seven last words, the first word is, Father, forgive them. And you ask the question, why? Now I know because they really didn't know who they were crucifying. They didn't know who they were lying upon. They didn't know who they were trying to ridicule. They didn't know that this man that we have strung out here on the cross is the one that can save my soul. We had no clue that he had the power to heal us of our infirmities. We had no clue that if I'm blind and I can believe that I can see, he can touch my eyes and I see. If I'm crippled, I can walk. They had no clue of who he is. So he didn't get mad at them. He didn't cuss them out like we do with each other. He didn't talk about them like we do with each other. He didn't talk about them like we talk about each other behind each other's back. He just said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They have no clue that as they put this nail in my right hand, the nail in my left hand, they have no clue that they're doing this to your only begotten son. The only son that you have, the only son that was commissioned to come on earth to show them how to walk in love. That's my word. You know that's my word. I'm going to stay on love because love, it endorses who Christ really is. I'm going to stay on love until I have this thing to, I don't care if an enemy looks at me with a gun in my face. I'm going to love you in spite of because it endorses the unity of God's love. You cannot forgive unless you know how to love. You have to know how to love. And the reason why many of us cannot forgive is because we have no clue of how powerful love is. You know love comes from the heart. It comes from the heart. That's the only way he could have been strung out on the cross. And looked down at his enemies, people who did not love him back, looked at them and said, Father, forgive them. When was the last time you did that? When was the last time we looked back at our enemies and looked our enemies into the eyes, into the face, and said, Father, forgive you? 
because you don't even know what you're doing to me. I'm a child of God. What you do to me and what you think you're doing to me, you're not really doing it to me. You're doing it to my daddy. That's why I don't have to retaliate. I don't have to uh, come back with revenge. I don't have to because I am a child of God. I'm in the body of Christ. I'm saved, sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. So that means whatever you do to me, you're not doing it to me. You're doing it to my father. So it's easy for me to forgive because it's not about me, Carol. It's about him. He didn't have to ponder on that thing. He didn't have to worry about it. He said, Father, forgive them. <laughs> For they don't even know what they're doing. Why? Because forgiveness is for you. It frees you up. It'll free you up so you can be free to serve. So you can be free to give back. To what God has given to you. Wouldn't it be a beautiful day when we can wake up and just glorify God all day long? Still working on the assembly line, but I'm glorifying God. Still working at the computer, but I'm still glorifying God. Working at my desk, but I'm still glorifying God. From the time I get up to the time I go to bed, I'm glorifying God. Wouldn't that be a beautiful feeling? That's what he wants. But there's so much in the way. So much in the way. The devil is making his rounds. And he's making sure that what's in the way will keep you from giving the energy to God for what he expects from you. And no one ever thinks that the enemy is in working position. We don't ever think about it until it gets so severe. Then we realize it's an attack of the enemy. No, you need to recognize this when you know that it's not right from the beginning. That's the opportunity to give God glory. He gets glory when we defeat the devil. You have to forgive because he gets glory out of that. That pride that's in the way, we have to do, just kill that thing and bury it from what it's come from. It comes from hell. It's not coming from heaven. The Bible says in Proverbs 16 and 18, pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride goes before you even fall. So that means Pride piles up. Pride really don't want to fall because if it's got a lot of pride in your spirit, he really don't want you to fall because the more pride you have, the more you become blind in seeing God. Pride don't want you to fall. But when the fall comes and when you're down and out, how are you going to get up from that ground if you don't have the power and the strength? And that's where the enemy gets us. Because the haughty spirit then sets in. Now, it's not about asking for forgiveness. It's not about me asking you to forgive me. It's about me. I don't have to. Because you did it to me first. And I want you to tell me today, where in the Bible, where in the Word of God did it say, because you hit me in my mouth, I can hit you back? It's in Old Testament, but that's not God's way. That was before the demonstrator came on earth to show us that if you hit me in my mouth, I haven't gotten there yet, though. So if you hit me in my mouth, I don't know what I'll do. But I do know God's way says, no, no, no. You have to forgive. See how far we are away from God? Because I don't think you're going to let your neighbor just smack you. <laughs> Be honest with you. I just haven't gotten there yet. Amen. I'm working on it. Had something that happened at my job last week. 
I was trying to bring the situation under control. A little um, discrepancy was going on at the job. And I was telling the gentleman to calm down. Let's talk about it. And I was standing in the doorway like this. And I said, let's go into my office and talk about it. Bishop, I don't want to talk about it. I said, okay, well, just calm down. So he got so angry, and I'm standing in the doorway, and he took his hand, pushed my shoulder so he can get out the door. I don't want you to tell me that I'm not saved. <laughs> he put his hands on me. And I thought about Pastor Tim's lesson the night before. because This happened on a Thursday. And we talked about the enemy, how you have to recognize that enemy. You don't ever have to worry about the enemy defeating you. All you have to do is recognize the power that you have to defeat him. And when he pushed me to the side, flesh said, push him back. But the Spirit of God said, let it go. Because I'm getting ready to get the victory out of this. You can't give the devil what he's asking for. Forgive him and let it go. And I had to forgive him and let it go. And what it showed me, it showed me that the power of God really works. If the Bible says it, you can believe it, and that settles it. There's no compromising with that. It showed me how I have grown in the spirit. Because there would have been a time, even as Bishop Mel Griffin, my position would have went off. There would have been a time. But what I got out of that was the fact that I've grown in the spirit. And I had to forgive him for what he did because that is the demonstration that God wants us to do today. Amen. Forgiveness is for you so you can be set free because if you don't forgive, you are in sin. It's a sin not to forgive. Why let pride have that must dominance over your life? It's a sin when you don't forgive. The first word, Father, forgive them. The first word, because God wants that to be first in our life. To practice it in the gymnasium of your spirit. Practice it as you begin to lift the weights of God's word. When you lift the weights of God's word, you become stronger, stronger, stronger. Then you'll see the muscles growing, which means you've got strength now to handle the oppositions that come in your life. But when you do nothing about it, it settles in your spirit and have dominance in your life. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He teaches forgiveness in the Lord's prayer when he says, forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us in Matthew 6 and 14. Trespass is a sin. It's a guilt. In the Lord's prayer, he says, Father, forgive them of their trespasses. Forgive them of their sin." And then, not, Father, forgive them if they even sin against me. I'm covering the entire ground. I don't want any glory. I do not want any glory. I want to be as humble as I can as a little child, as our youngest grandchild, Noah. I want to be as humble as her. She knows no right or wrong. She knows no hate. Little babies, so humble. I want to be that humble so God can use me because whether I look at it or not, I am still a child in God's eyes. I'm still a babe in God's eyes. 
35 years in the ministry, but I'm still a babe. There are things I still have to practice and learn how to do before God calls me home. I don't ever want to feel like I have this thing so down packed that I don't need the word of God anymore. I enjoy to be ministered to by our pastor, Pastor Tim. I enjoy that. It's been a long time since I've been able to sit and be ministered to because it feeds me and it makes me stronger. I don't ever want to feel that I can't receive the word of God. I didn't learn how to forgive overnight. Men, you know we have a strong pride in our life. Look at your brother and say, he's telling the truth. Amen. And it's only because of the spiritual genetics that God has given us. He said, I will make man in my image. In the image of God, he made us. He made us like him. So he gave us the same strength that he had. Amen. He said, I will make you ruler over the land. You will have dominance over the fish, over the sea. I mean, that's a lot of power. But when men are not taught and not shown how to use that power for God, we're still a weak vessel in God's eyesight. And I've learned how to forgive. When my wife and I got married, we had some challenges. Anytime you get married, you always bring challenges to the table because you're just going to let that spouse know that uh, it ain't going to be like this, like you think, come on, somebody, I'm not by myself. <laughs> so the enemy sees that, and look how my hands are positioned. You're divided. There's no togetherness. There's no oneness. So the enemy sees where he can get right here in the middle and tell the wife, well, you're right in what you're saying. Get into the man and tell him that he's right in what he's saying, and there you go. You're at each other. Very easy. Because both parties want to be right. Both parties want to have the last say. But then nobody's forgiving the other because we don't know how. And it starts with the heart. That's why you have to exercise that heart daily. Because when my wife told me that I really didn't love her, and I told her I did, but I was just, I, yeah, I do, do love you. Can I tell her I love her and I'm all mad? Yes, I do love you. Don't tell me I don't love you. I know I love you. I wouldn't be here. Y'all heard that before, right? <laughs> but that's not what she meant. What she was saying that if you really love me, is that the demonstration of love? That's not God's love. God's love is a humble love. Down to the marrow of that bone. And if you really love me, then you wouldn't worry about apologizing for your actions. And when I learn how to do that, and when I see sometimes we might have a disagreement, disagreement don't mean you're arguing. Come on, somebody. It just means that you're just not agreeing. I had to ask her, will you forgive me? I had to practice that. That's not overnight. And since I've been practicing it, I use it all the time now. I have peace in my home. Even if I see that it might be going there, okay, baby, I apologize. Because we men are peacemakers. We're supposed to be the peacemakers in our home. We're not supposed to let the enemy have a field day in our home. So you do what you have to do to make peace. I had to practice that. I had to get into my spiritual gymnasium and practice how to forgive. People who I offend, I had to practice that. In my ministry, I had an associate minister that backstabbed me so severely. He was with me for 10 years. My associate pastor, he backstabbed me so severely. It caused pain. It caused me to almost lose my mind. 
I thought I was going to lose it. Took it out on my wife. Until I had to realize the only way to let this go is to forgive him. I had to forgive him so I can be free, so I can go forward. So if I just happen to see him in the community, I won't have to worry about a revenge. I won't have to worry about a, a get back. I can see him as he is. To know that he's in God's hands. I'm free. And he yet has to do that to me, but he has not. But that's not my worry. I love him. Because if I don't love him, I won't get in. Same situation with Christ. As they crucified him, as they beat him up, as they threw rocks at him. He forgave them and loved them to open that door for you and I to get in. That's how severe this life is. And I'm quite sure there are people in your life right now, family members, friends, co-workers, that you need to go back and ask for forgiveness or even tell them, I forgive you for what you've done to me. We're okay. You're in God's hands. When was the last time you put somebody in God's hands? Take them out of your hands and put them in God's hands. I don't worry about when people don't speak back. It don't bother me when people don't speak to me the way I spoke to them. Why should I worry about that? Oh, they only said hi. What? Isn't that what you want them to say? It's not their nature to carry on a conversation. They said just what you need to receive, a hello in return. I'm not going to get bent up out of shape because of that. I'm doing what God has called me to do. And please don't get me wrong. I have a long ways to go. But thank God I'm not like I used to be. I'm not trying to look backwards. Man, if I start looking backwards, I'm defeating all the accomplishments that I've conquered in the will of God. Now, there's some stuff back there that I don't even want to face no more. There's some stuff back there, man, I, I'm not trying to look at. I'm looking for what God has in store for me. And keep on practicing on forgiveness. In Matthew 6 and 12, in the Lord's Prayer, he says, forgive us of our debts. Debts means of what we owe. We owe that to a person. We owe that. He says, forgive us of our debt and our debt towards. We owe that. Not so much in monetary and money. The Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. So if you're caught up into money, you need to stay right there and ask God to show you how to transfer that love into him. Take that same love when you feel you can't do without money. And you feel that money is your life. And you praise money. You're praising your pension. You won the lotto yesterday, but you didn't tithe off of it. That was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> Just a joke. Amen. Amen. When you love money to the degree that money becomes before God, stay there, pray about it, and ask God to transfer that love that I have for money into him. Then it won't be about money because he said, I will supply your every need according to my riches in glory, in heaven. So why should I worry about my needs? If I trust him, if I believe in him. See, I trust God to the fact that if I offended you, I trust God that God's going to give me a willpower to apologize. I trust him to that degree. 
that God will supply my every need. I'm not talking about uh, the, the needs of my home, the, the needs of my life. I'm talking about the needs of my spiritual growth. He'll supply that. For whatever I need, God will supply. But I have to put some things in order first. Like this first word, forgive them. It helps you become free to stop the pain. There's a pain that you're suffering with. There's a pain that you are dealing with right now. And the only way that that pain is going to be delivered is that you have to forgive. Why allow that pain to linger in your spirit to whereas it's paining you so where it hurts, you can't even give God glory? Because that's what he's asking for. He says that forgive us of our debts that we owe in Matthew 6 and 12. And 6, 14, he comes right back and says, and teach us if to forgive them that trespass against us. God requires it. And when you forgive, you cannot revenge. You cannot come back on your enemy. You cannot. You let it go. Remember that pride. It comes before the fall. Which means if you're holding on to a prideful spirit, sooner or later you're going to fall. And what you don't know is how big the fall will be. It could be a fall that is so devastating you cannot get back up. I don't want that kind of fall. I want to keep my hands in God's hand. And so the question is, as I close, Bishop, what do I do in order to forgive? Make a list of who offers or who offended you. Make a list. Some of us probably have to use two or three pages. But it's okay. Make a list. You don't have to jot down what they did. <laughs> Just make a list of the names and then pray for them. Bring those names up to the altar. Lead them here. And watch what God will do. And then identify your hurt. Identify the hate. Identify the pain. And face it. Don't run away from it. Face it. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Face it so you won't hurt anymore. Face it so you won't pain anymore. Face it. Stand before it. Don't let it defeat you. The Bible says we must bear the pain. We must bear the infirmities of the weak. For those who can't carry strength, we have to carry it for them. Yes, it's a load on your back. But God will give you the strength to carry the load. Because many of us have been carrying loads that are heavy, but God has given you strength to carry the load. To bear the infirmities of the weak. And then lastly, just let it go. Just let it go. Take your hands off of it. You know why we use so much sanitizer? Because our hands are dirty. And anytime we touch something, we first go to the hand sanitizer. Because germs are everywhere. So when your hands are on the situation, you're germing the problem. You're contaminating the situation. God says, take your hands off of it. Make it mine. Transfer it from your hands into my hands. 
for my hands are pure. My hands are clean. My hands are right. I can wash them in the blood of the Lamb. When you walk out of here today, walk out with a new determination. I'm going to go into the spiritual gymnasium. Start working on my forgiveness. Because I want to be strong. I want to be able to stand against the adversities that come against me. I don't care who you are. I want to be able to do the right thing. Before I close this morning, if that's you, I'm going to open up the altar before we leave. For those who want to come and just say, you know, Lord, I heard the message and it's not so much on forgiveness. It's just about me I need to fix. To just put me in position so I can learn how to forgive. I need to be closer to my wife. I need to be closer to my husband. I have children that don't speak to me. I don't know if this is you or not. But before I close, I want to open up the altar. It's open. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Jesus paid it all. all to him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain He washed me white as snow And oh praise the one who paid my debt And raised this life up from the dead Oh praise the one Paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Jesus paid it all, and all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Just want to share with you, as the altar remains open, God is going to be with you as he watches over us even when we don't ask him to. But as he shadows his spirit over your life this week, I want you to meditate with him and ask this question. Lord, what is forgiveness? And show me how to forgive. Just ask him that. You might already know, but watch God give you a different revelation. Let us stand. Father God, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, that what we have heard, we pray that it will be applied to spiritual growth for daily use in our life. Now as we leave this place, never departing from the unity of your spirit, keeping us all in perfect peace, love, and in harmony until we see each other again. In 
Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Reminder to get by the tables for the ministry fair.